Whoop, 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 whoop. We're back. I always like making those noises, the whoop, whoops. Uh, I don't you get know. so excited for I the new podcast. get excited or I just get nervous and don't know what to do. So I just go to like it, uh, my whoop, whoops. And every good worship song needs a good whoop, whoop. Don't every, you think? No, I think every good worship song needs a Jesus. From some random person in the audience. It's always me. I uh, (laughs) have told a friend of mine who does those recordings that I was going to do it. And uh, he was not very impressed with me. Well, we have a friend who was doing a live recording that you happened to be hanging out with him during. And he was like, yeah, just go stand anywhere. There's nowhere off limits. And so Israel was standing literally in where all of the worship leaders were like recording their vocals. But the funny thing about (laughs) Israel is that he, because of his testimony is deaf in one ear and um i think that's why you're completely tone deaf and he's such a worshiper but it sounds only good once it gets to the halls of heaven i believe you have the best voice in heaven heaven tune instead of auto tune yes i Uh, know that god loves your worship but down here it's like (laughs) we need a three foot radius from israel (laughs) Those poor people. And you know what? That whole recording was such a cool thing. They had all the videographers. They had this incredible venue. I've never seen anything <laughs> that they produced from it. So I might have ruined it. And you told me like thing. you didn't know any of the words and you're out there oh, like, no. Oh, but I did learn a couple melon. new ones. So yeah, that was you pretty learned, good. Yeah. But okay. hey, you were in a live recording for worship. Uh, yep. And where were we recently? Just recently where uh, someone was like, th- uh, confused me for the wrong Israel thinking that, um, <laughs> oh, John Bevere mentioned something. Israel Houghton is here. And I mean, Israel Campbell. And um, like, and the crowd yeah. was very excited. That they were you hoping were I was going to sing. Yeah. They were hoping I was going to sing. And you should do it. Done it. No. Okay. Let's get jump <laughs> into this. All of this two minutes of just welcoming everybody to the Campbell. Welcome. Soup podcast. Welcome. And uh, we're going to talk about today and I'll really let you introduce it. But the title of it is the D word. I know that got some people's attention. I hope it did. So yeah. talk to us. We're going to talk about the D word and the D word that we are talking about is not four letter. It is discipline. Don't turn it off. Discipline, don't turn it off. Nobody (laughs) wants to hear a podcast on discipline, but we really feel like this is such an important topic to talk about because so much of our spiritual journey has to do with discipline, right, Israel? And um, so we want to talk about the benefits of discipline and maybe the reason behind the why of discipline. And that's why we called it the D word because you, we wanted you to tune in. We wanted you to listen because we believe that God wants us all to learn why discipline is important. And so I'm just going to read a big portion of scripture yeah. and then maybe we can just go for it after that. I love it. Um, so Hebrews in Hebrews 12, I want to just start from the very beginning because we're going to read uh, quite a bit. We're going to read 12 verses. So I'm going to read quickly. It says this, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we know this, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God to consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. But the next part is verse four. And it says, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, my son, do do not make light of the Lord's discipline Mm. and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. And I I love this so much. I just want to read a tiny little bit more. I know that's a lot of scripture, but verse seven says this, endure hardship, endure discipline. God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, but if you do not, you are not legitimate. You're not true sons and daughters. I love that because what what this portion of scripture is talking about is we don't like discipline. We don't like being corrected or rebuked, but it's part of the nature of God because he loves us so much. And I just want to start off by saying, 
when God disciplines us, it feels like love. Yeah, I know you and I love to be in services where we, where our hearts are being checked, where we're being rebuked on what our broken thinking is because we feel so loved. And there is a difference. And I think we're going to talk probably another podcast about the judgment. Judgment does not feel like good discipline that loves you, but there's a difference when God lovingly corrects us and gives yeah. us discipline. I love that. And um, Rach, the one phrase that you kept on saying uh, as we were kind of going over your notes and we were just kind of going over this was that what that a, a great faith definition of what discipline is. And can you just say that again? Because I thought the wordsmith of that was so good. Wow. You put pressure on me to remember. I say a lot of words, but I think it was when we discipline our own lives and when we receive discipline from God and when we discipline our children, we are loving our future self. We're investing by faith into the future of who we're becoming. Uh, yeah. Is that, I, that it? That was it. Okay, and good. I think everybody wants to hear it again. If you have it, it's so good. It is. Discipline is really um, the the what helps us uh, by faith become who God's called us to be. Mm. And so if we love our future self, uh, we really want that discipline, don't we? Yeah. And um, many times uh, you and I, we went through, there was a, a, a time where we really thought maybe we would adopt and we went through the LA foster system, which at that time was a hot mess. We won't, That's a whole nother podcast. But yeah. um, I remember learning some things that made us go through some parenting classes. Mm -hmm. And um, really um, one of the things that they had just kind of talked about is people, there's nothing wrong with discipline, but wrong discipline will really impact if you're fostering somebody because of if they had been disciplined the wrong way, then you come in and try to add any kind of discipline the wrong way, then it just makes it, you know, multiple times worse. And so it was just really good to hear somebody secular um, talk about what discipline was. And it really is. It is somehow putting some parameters and as Christians, putting some parameters through faith that this is not where we want to be mm -hmm. and where we want to go. God is putting some things to help us be better at that. So I love that. And I know that we wanted to even talk about um, how important it is to um, discipline our kids. And before you jump into that, you know, we're called disciples, <laughs> which has that word right. of discipline in there. Yeah. And um, and then there's also just the phrase that's uh, becoming very popular is, is um, Christian discipline. And so what are those and how to do that? But let's talk about maybe uh, parents that are out there disciplining your kids. How do we do that? Because my parents' generation and their parents' discipline was a little bit different. Right. There's a lot in that. In that, But um, I think both you and I come from a little bit different parenting backgrounds, too, where our parents... Um, you know, I was number seven, so my parents were just tired. So discipline came out of exhaustion. Like if I hear one more word, I'm going to slap all of you, all 10 of you. Um, but I think that we have to have a healthy relationship with disciplining our kids. We have to know what God's word said, says about it. We need a really healthy why, because I think what's happened is now we allow kids to have their own truth. We allow kids to have their own voice. And I, I've heard a lot of parents say, well, I know that you want to throw a fit, but can you use your words? And then they want their child to put words to sin. And <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. It's when we have a child that throws a fit, that is our sin nature coming out for the very first time. And it comes out of these adorable little faces that we love with all of our hearts. But the Bible says that we were born with sin in our heart. And so God has given us as righteous parents, it's a big responsibility. Yeah. This is not, oh, finally, I get to be in control and make someone afraid of me kind yeah. of parenting. This is a, a weighty thing that God has entrusted us with to raise up and disciple and also a big part of, of uh, raising godly children is early childhood discipline, uh, middle-aged discipline, high school discipline. And our prayer is we only have 18 years. I think Israel and I have a unique uh, spot talking about this because we have two adult kids and the discipline that we put inside of them when they were six, three, 11, 16, 
our prayer, we didn't do it right. I, I mean, if we went back, I'm sure Israel, we would both say that we would do things differently now, even now, and they're just yeah. now adults. But the point is, it's so important to discipline our children young and raise them up with boundaries. And this is a sentence that I always said to our kids, and then I'll pass it to you. I used to always say, especially when they were old enough to comprehend, like when our girls were in junior high and high school, and we were bringing discipline, we would say to them, we aren't doing this because we want you to be miserable. We aren't taking away this thing that we don't think is good for you, or we are not disciplining you in this area because we don't love you. We're doing it because we love the future you. Yeah. And we would rather you have a moment of being uncomfortable and being mad at us than a lifetime of you not walking in every good thing God's called you and created you to do. And that's going to take discipline. Yeah. And I am so like, that's just brilliant that you said that. And so many things that we could go on just on that. I guess another podcast, we keep on saying that. We could do a podcast. series for sure. Yeah. And it would be really wise to do. But I think that that is so true is, you know, you, num a couple of different things just come to my mind when we talk about that is um, don't be their best friend, be their parent when it comes to child discipline. Yeah. And I think sometimes we we want them to, you know, especially when they get a little bit older, we want to be the cool parents. But really, you have to play the tape forward. And like right. you said, that um, what seems like in a toddler is just a tantrum actually then really ruins marriages. It ruins careers. It ruins schooling. It ruins all relationships because um, what it's saying is if you don't get your way, mm -hmm. then you shut down or you do whatever you, you know, all these things. And so that's not really helping your children because in the future, there's going to be difficult things. <laughs> there's going to be people that you don't like. There's going to be LA traffic. There's going to be so many different things. And, and that's why the discipline and the um, saying, no, 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 no. I see your future and I'm disciplining you now because I, I yeah, right now it's a, it's a hassle and it's actually takes a little more work to do the discipline yeah, than yeah. ignore it. But I future self so much. We're going to say that's not allowed. That's not in the Campbell house. Uh, I don't care what every other house can do. We're not because we love your future self. It's so important for our kids to hear no. And when we were talking to Phoebes and Chloe about, hey, I, I remember this conversation where we said, we, we don't care if you marry somebody that lived a crazy life and God has redeemed them. And now they have a relationship with Jesus. We're good with that. Like that doesn't um, make us nervous about your future spouse. The one kind of person we really want to ask you not to consider for marriage is someone who's never heard no, Yeah, because that has ruined their heart. And so when you have never heard the word no, you're conniving, you work the system, whatever that looks like, you know how to control and manipulate and you throw fits. And that is a hard thing to break. And so for us, we, we really don't want our children you know, we want to know that our children's spouses more than what I think there's a lot of different things that people wish. We will really pray that um, our children can marry somebody who has withstood some storms and have also heard the word no and made it through the other side. And hearing no is important. Hearing no is important for us. Yeah. Hearing no is important for our kids. Hearing no um, from God is important, even in our spiritual practices. Well, and it's the first actual sin in the garden was a hearing a no and throwing a fit and listening to the enemy going, well, why can't I? And then pursuing what God has said, no. So that's so true that the, the no and the discipline. And I think you're, you're so right, Rachel, um, looking for a spouse or whatever, you, we can overcome poverty. We can overcome rough life. Uh, but if there's not that no or that discipline, then, you know, that's just going to be a hot mess. So I love that. Any other things that you, I know we, you had like an outline of different things we wanted to talk about, but was there any more on the children discipline that you wanted to say? Yeah, I think the um, other part about disciplining children, I think that we need to all acknowledge is that it takes a lot of courage to discipline our kids well. 
because it, it obviously we know we don't do it out of anger. We don't do it to, um, to hurt them. We don't do it to get even with them. We are not, we don't bring ourselves down to their level, but you know, the Bible, you know, Hebrews 12 is so good to just show us that, you know, we don't, it's not an angry punishment. Discipline right. is, cannot be interchanged with the word punishment. And, and me being raised, discipline was punishment. And I think um, opening the lines of communication with our kids is vital when we're disciplining them and talking through, this is why we're disciplining you in this area and allowing them to be part of the process so that it starts forming their thinking, involving the word of God, involving why the Campbells aren't going to live like the rest of the world and, and doing it in a way that brings them into the conversation instead of pushing them away from the family when they're in trouble and not allowing them to process it well, but really making it a part. And then the last thing I would just say is um, something that we've had to learn too is humbling ourselves yeah. when we discipline wrong and, and going to our kids and asking for forgiveness when we're angry, asking for uh, telling them when we're wrong. I think that that builds so much trust in our kids. Um, I think that kids can handle a lot more than we think. They can handle us failing as parents if we're willing to wrap back around that and and go, you know, God's not pleased with that response that I had and I'm not pleased with the response I had and I really want to apologize. I really want to say I'm wrong. I think that as parents, if we could get a hold of that, it would be a lot healthier for our family. And I think our kids are so generous in wanting good relationship with us, in wanting to be right with their parents and having a right um, relationship. And when we put that effort forward and we extend our heart to connect to theirs, when we've done wrong, I think helps them connect their heart to ours when they've done wrong. Yeah, I a million times agree with that. I, I never received that uh, when I was younger and I knew when they were wrong. <laughs> like It's obvious you're wrong on this or you're hot headed about this or whatever. You went too far on that. And so that I think that but what would you have done if they apologized? I'm sorry, what? I'm just wondering, like, if your parents would have come and apologized, what would that have done for your heart? Yeah, totally would have um, helped uh, with that and not closed off a part of my heart or whatever. So absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just have written that we are talking about that disciplining our kids and then maybe talking about disciplining ourselves. And I think you have authority on this since how many miles did you run today? <laughs> too many and it's raining in la it's raining so it's treadmill running which is even the worst it's so slow and boring and somebody stood next to me that um had bo and it was like <laughs> all of a sudden and i was like oh man i gotta breathe through my mouth and i was like Hilarious. it was terrible and you can't run faster to get away no you're stuck there and uh that was the life of a runner uh, but uh, yeah, I think so good. Again, going back to if we get this right with the children, then we also can, uh, I think what you were saying so well is that then you can do it to ourselves. You can begin to do that and really um, begin to just um, start to go, okay, for my future self, why am I doing this now? It's not to be, uh, you know, whatever to it's not just for goal setting or to be a Californian and to be a LA uh, running person. It's always what's the goal ahead. Who's my future self? Why am I disciplining? And it comes with finances, comes with, um, you know, relationship. I mean, every little thing can be moved by discipline and, and it's called self discipline uh which is tough isn't it rach i it's so tough yeah it's probably the hardest thing in my life to um conquer and it's something i have to constantly allow god to help teach me because i was again number seven of ten kids i didn't even have a bedroom i didn't have where fold your clothes and put them in this drawer that was just our we had a wonderful family but that was not part of our family and so i had to learn that way later in life and i think i'm not blaming because i don't i'm not like well, I'm not as disciplined because, but there is something in my makeup that's like, I'm okay with going with the flow almost too much. And so I have to like, okay, Holy Spirit, will you help me learn and put into practice these disciplines? And I think that's why he gave me you because you're a, in the, in your nature, you're a very disciplined person. 
So Which we're good is for each so other. weird. But I love Because who would have thought? But when you discipline your life, it, it's so much easier. And you're not always responding to chaos, but you can plan. Yeah. And I didn't have that. Yeah, it's so true. And you are in so many different things. We'll look back and go, oh, I could have if I would have been more disciplined in that. And it's the great thing is on that self-discipline, if you're a non-believer, it's a lot of responsibility on yourself to do. Mm. But if you're, and maybe this is the segue, if you're a Christian, what's great is you have the work of the Holy Spirit, the strength of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And so some of those things, it should be, I feel like as a Christian, easier because we're not just relying on our own self to do it, but we actually have this divine power that we can tap into to overcome mm. any kind of thing. And if anybody wants us to, our future to be better, it's God. If anybody wants us to, you know, see those things. And I think it also helps strengthen if it's Holy Spirit strengthen, then we're not um, just pushing ourselves to do things that are just maybe worldly or carnal, um, you know, and we're trying to do all this, you know, only eat yogurt and, um, you know, we uh, use kale for shampoo and we're just so <laughs> disciplined in everything, oh God, no. uh, you know, knowing which one is what you can have that with the balance of the Holy Spirit. Israel came home and he had read an, a health article that was an update that was like, kale is toxic to your body. And he was so happy about it. Like, I knew something was wrong with that hairy vegetable. It was the <laughs> highlight of my year. So I good. knew it. I knew kale was from hell. And I just didn't uh, didn't have the scientific backup for it. So <laughs> I think the thing about discipline that we need to just acknowledge is discipline is never satisfying while you're doing it. But it is the one, it's like the biggest reward later. You're really sowing seeds into your harvest. And yeah. if you want to live a life of peace and righteousness, then it doesn't happen overnight. And it happens with just how do you, how do you, this is the saying, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And I think that just for me being overwhelmed with even the word discipline coming from abuse and then coming from chaos, those two things are anti-discipline and it's easier to just go like you're floating in a river through life. And that's not how God wants us to live because yeah. it's living like you don't believe that when you sow, you reap. Yeah, oh, that's so good. And I, I mean, that's probably number one, uh, number one thing that we would say about self-discipline is don't, uh, don't start big. And I think that that is probably my fault. Uh, you know, these extremes of no, you know, a little bit adds up versus um, these big, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out three hours. Really, if you just went for 20 minutes Every day is a lot better than three, three hours and then not going for seven days because you're so sore from the three hour workout, you know, just a little consistency. Mm. And that goes in every single thing, whether that's diet, whether that's meditating on God's word. Don't try to read the whole Bible today. Um, you know, a little is better. The consistency in self-discipline is so much better than those massive extremes uh, can can actually cause uh what you know discipline is tough in the meantime but it this is too much discipline can just cause you to give up mm. and then you don't even go there so yeah because it's a culture of freedom and not the law and i heard a comedian that was making fun of christians that have like um a big mac meal and everyone's sitting at the table with their mcdonald's fries coke and a big mac and then they hold hands and say lord jesus please nourish this food to our body it is like there's nothing what's god got to work with i mean that's a harder <laughs> miracle than the loaves and the fish but um i think that i love this um, the portion of Hebrews 12, it's like the end of what I wanted to talk about is just Hebrews 12, 12. And it says, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Wow. And it doesn't say it, this verse does not say God is going to come and strengthen your feeble you arms make. and strengthen your weak knees. And he, it doesn't wow. say God is going to make level paths for your feet. It actually says, therefore, after this, right after it's talking about all the discipline, how God loves us. He calls us sons and daughters when he disciplines. It feels like love when he chastens us. And so this is his pattern. But then he says, it's on you to 
walk out the discipline. It's on you to strengthen what's weak in your life and to make your weak knees strengthen the places that are weak. And then it's up to us to also choose to make straight paths. It's us. It's on us to wake up in the morning and feed ourselves with the word of God. It's on us to, um, discipline our tongue when we gossip. It's on us to build our husbands up instead of um, tearing them down. It's on us. Those are the things that God is requiring of us. And then it says, if we do those things, if we begin to discipline discipline ourselves, then what is lame will not be disabled, but rather here's the God part healed. And I just feel like God wants to see our faith in disciplining ourselves. God wants to see us have faith in our future children by disciplining them. And he wants to see us yield to his discipline. And then when we do those things, we begin to take the small little steps of discipline. He comes in and he gives us the grace to heal. Oh, Isn't so that so good. beautiful? Yeah. That's a, that's such a good word for me. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> so there, it's not just pray for discipline. There's some um, practical applications that we have to do. And then he comes in. That's so good. It's almost like taking a step of faith, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, it's getting a resume because you're believing for a new job. It's um, putting in a breath mint because um, there's a singles event after church and there might be somebody there. You're single and mingle and, you know, all those little things, right? Is that kind of a little bit of what you're saying? I think so. And I just think invest in your future self. Who has God called you to become? And then um, discipline your life toward that. Take the steps. But also, you know, something that I think that is so important, too, when we're talking back about our kids is that we discipline each one of our kids a little differently. Like not, we do it evenly, (laughs) Um, except Silas, because he's perfect. (laughs) But uh, but I think that we have to have- needs more discipline. I know, I know, it's true. That's your job. Oh my gosh. Um, So I think that we have to go, God, what is this child created for? Mm. And help me raise them toward that. And so the training of your children of, hey, I really see this on your life. Let's take steps toward it. Let's make sure you're healthy and let's discipline you that way. I think is a really powerful thing that God gives us to get to do as parents. And uh, one word on that is do it in unity. I think some of our biggest um, like just learning moments was um, maybe you didn't want me to discipline them hard or difficult or that what brought back flashbacks. I right. know a couple of times brought flashbacks from your childhood, but it didn't necessarily mean it was wrong, but it was like, okay, or you telling me because it did bring back a flashback. Hey, the tone that you're doing it in is not going to be a good tone because I've heard that tone and it did not work for me. And so, you know, having to navigate all of that, but being on the same page, yeah. you don't want, um, mom to be the disciplinarian and dad gives everything is all it's easy or the opposite uh you want to be on the same front on that because you both love them equally and we've had um maybe we've even shared podcast stories of where parents um were the opposite of that and then actually their their um, children end up doing these outrageous things that were so harmful to them and others and they look back and go we should have been on the same page on again that word discipline really what's their future what is the faith that we have in their future and 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 positioning them uh to get that so that is brilliant come on the d word that is so good uh any other last things as we close with that i just want to encourage everybody if you feel like you're being corrected by god if you feel like you're walking through a season that feels like god what are you doing or maybe even it feels like you're being disciplined by God and maybe some things are just feeling a little stuck or withheld. Um, just know that God only disciplines us because he loves us and he wants what's best for us. Sometimes his discipline comes because he's strengthening us for for the blessing ahead and for the job he's going to give us ahead that's going to be amazing. And and if we yield the quicker we can yield to the chastening of the Lord, the more he can extend blessing and favor on our lives. And so don't despise the chastening chastening of the Lord, but receive his perfect love. And it goes a long way. Come on. So good. 
Ah, uh, another Campbell Soup podcast, just conversations that Rachel and I have. Uh, so hopefully you on your treadmill, hopefully not running next to somebody with BO or on your commute to LA, LA River on some of those freeways in San Diego, wherever it is, we pray that it is safe and that you don't despise the D word. Amen. 